Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over 10 entry-level jobs that are great starting points when trying to break into tech. All of these jobs have remote capabilities and a job tip for you is to ignore the job requirements that you see on the job boards. So if it requires like 20 years of experience in the cloud, yes, I have seen this, just ignore those requirements because uh, they're kind of just written by HR and a lot of job descriptions are written by junior people who don't necessarily know tech. If you're new to my channel, this channel is all about helping you upskill and land a job in tech. So go ahead and smash that like button below. And to thank you, here is a picture of an iguana. I just find them so beautiful. I also do have a free build your own bootcamp guide below, a list of curated courses, both free and paid to help you build the foundations that you need to succeed to it. So the first entry level job on my list is an identity access management analyst. This is also known as IAM and this is an extremely hot field right now. I said essentially you're just going to specify who has access to what resources and under which conditions. With IAM policies, you manage permissions for the workforce, make sure people can't access files that they're not supposed to, make sure people can access the correct files that they need to do the job. Some daily duties you might be doing is performing provisioning or deprovisioning. This is literally just adding accounts and deleting accounts according to the company's policy. You may be granting people permission or doing tier two tickets that the help desk sends you because someone doesn't have access to certain files. This is a pretty easy job to learn and a great starting point if you are new. If you want to learn more about this, look at the AWS IAM course right here. Average according to the H-1B salary, which is actual people's salaries, the average for an IAM analyst is around $70,000. The next and really popular one on my list is the SOC analyst, or also known as the cybersecurity analyst, and these are the first line of defense in security. Essentially, they're going to be monitoring the system, information and event management. This is also a log aggregation tool such as Splunk and trying to correlate the logs to find different types of attacks. They could be tuning for false positives. They could be performing analysis of different security risks and alerts to evaluate risk. They will be ensuring proper documentation of security attacks and different things that are executed. A really good place to start with this is Black Hills Anti-Siphon Training, and he has a pay what you can course that goes over how to become a SOC analyst and all of the skills you need that he actually teaches his own in-house SOC team, and people have gotten hired after going through this course, so go check it out. The average salary for a cybersecurity analyst or SOC analyst is around $97,000 according to H1B data. Now this doesn't include bonuses or any other perks. This is simply just the base salary. The next really good entry level job to break into cloud, it would be the cloud support associate position. And here it's essentially going to be dealing with tier one type tickets. You're gonna be documenting. You're going to be doing a lot of talking and a lot of troubleshooting, being the tier one person with companies that are also having issues with their cloud. The average salary for a cloud support associate is around $78,000 thousand dollars and this is of course an entry-level job your pay can increase the the higher you go up some other names is cloud support engineer cloud administrator cloud associate cloud engineer tier one always make sure to look at the job descriptions when looking for it cybersecurity, or cloud entry-level jobs the next entry-level position that falls under IT is the IT support specialist job and I think this is a fantastic starting place Essentially, you're going to be troubleshooting tier one, maybe some tier two issues with on-premise equipment, meaning equipment that is locally at the place. You're gonna be documenting and troubleshooting basic tier one and tier two issues, such as network inactivity, you know, plug in the cable often comes undone. You're going to be coordinating desktop, laptop, and peripheral device support. You're going to be supporting different operating systems, such as Microsoft, Mac, Linux. You could also be troubleshooting peripherals, such as printers. And the average you can make 
is around, I guess, 50 to $70,000, depending on where you live. According to the H-1B data, it's around $58,000, but you could become more senior in this position and make 70 to $80,000. The next entry level job in tech that falls underneath cybersecurity is the IT security and compliance analyst. Now compliance doesn't really get a lot of attention. However, it is a fantastic place to start when you're in tech. It's not that difficult work. For instance, you could just be checklists and making sure that there are proper security controls in place to be in compliance with different rules and regulations. However, it does familiarize yourself with various aspects of computing systems. And this is within the cloud, ITs. Some things you're gonna wanna know is like HIPAA, PCI DSS, GDPR, and all of these different rules, laws, regulations, and how they apply to your company's computing system. As a compliance analyst, you can make around $80,000 starting out, but you can make way more than that as you become more senior and established and start leading different teams. If you enjoy administrative type of work, this may be the position for you that also pays way more than any admin job that you could possibly get. The next entry level job in tech that is a great starting point is, is becoming a data analyst. And now I have limited exposure to this. I've gone through the Google data analytics course, really good essentially, but that was it. There are plenty of other channels about this, but essentially you are going to collect and clean data about different topics and then try to correlate different data. Uh, this is a really big field, especially as artificial intelligence becomes more advanced because data is a really important part of AI uh, and machine learning because where are you gonna get that data from? Establish quantitative and qualitative metrics and key performance indicators to drive technical outcomes. Maybe you'll ensure databases are in compliance with the company's rules and regulations and make sure they're operating fine. And the average pay for this, according to Glassdoor, is 94,000. And according to H1B, it is around 87,000. So they, they line up. Great place to start. The next entry level job on my list is digital forensics. And this is where you're going to deal with in identifying, acquiring, processing, analyzing, and reporting on data stored electronically. Electronic evidence is a really huge component in a lot of law investigations, and if it is handled improperly, it can be ruled out of the case and won't be used as evidence, even though you need that evidence to prove that maybe the, the person being prosecuted is guilty. And so it's very important to follow things such as chain of custody. You're going to have to maintain extremely detailed work logs as this is really important when it comes to admitting this evidence into court. You're going to be performing comprehensive technical analysis and interpretations of computer related evidence. You're going to maintain the chain of custody of the physical evidence. You're going to restore files and all of that fun stuff. This is needed in incident response, but it's also a really big job in law enforcement. You can work at a lot of different places. I have uh, with digital forensics. Remember, you always have to take in this evidence as it is going to court. So you must be extremely careful and extremely meticulous with the documentation. Average digital forensics analyst can make around $76,000, which is a little bit lower than all of these other jobs. The next entry level position is working in a NOC as a network administrator. Now I've actually had this role before. There's a lot of downtime in this role, but you're basically going to be monitoring the network for any outages. You're probably going to be doing tier two customer tickets. You're going to be deploying maybe different types of agent software on desktops, depending on where you are. I did a lot of desktop support and network support. Sometimes companies roll them in together. I also did patch management within the NOC and asset management. So making sure all of the laptops were in good working order. This is an amazing job. Now network administrators and system administrators do have a slower than average job growth within the next 10 years. However, there are still plenty of jobs now and they, it, there are still going to be more jobs, just not as lucrative as it once was as there are more people doing it and not as much demand. The next entry level job I have is becoming a technical writer. Anyone who works in an enterprise or even a startup or mid-sized company will tell you documentation 
is extremely important. You're going to be collaborating with different teams in order to document their daily procedures and do their uh, standard operating procedures. You're gonna be working with like PMOs to produce deliverables and documentation. You're gonna be analyzing documentation flow and work processes. You're going to be editing documentation for clarity. Also, there are documentation audits, so you're going to make sure all of that documentation is in place and in compliance with the, the policies and rules and regulations placed by the government. You need to have also really good grammar uh, so if you're if you have writing skills honestly you would only have to gain a couple more skills to become a technical writer and a lot of people in tech are pretty bad writers and so this is a much needed job and documentation is extremely important and it can be terrible when the person who has all of the knowledge and never documented it leaves my next entry level job in tech that you could get is a GIS analyst. I actually got my bachelor's degree in GIS and this job is, in my opinion, pretty cool. What you're going to be doing is you're gonna be digitizing and geocoding data based on imagery, which is super fun. You're going to be collecting data by GPS devices. You're gonna be developing metadata as needed. You're going to be preparing GIS maps and software for internal and external users. The GIS analyst is often found in environmental agencies. You may be researching source documents, such as maps, legal descriptions, engineering drawings, survey information. You may be going out in the field and actually collecting data. The average pay for this is around $77,000. Also, there's not as much opportunity in GIS as there are all of the other fields that I have listed. However, it is a, a fun job, um, especially if you really like the environment because that is where a lot of GIS analysts work is within environmental organizations, nonprofit organizations. And that concludes my easiest jobs to enter IT with. So please comment, like, and subscribe. I also have tons of other videos um, for IT, cybersecurity, and I do have that build your own bootcamp with a curated list of courses to help you get a solid foundation in IT. The link is below in the description. So make sure to check that out. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.